Today we're going to take a look at reverse engineering a mechanical scan file inside of Fusion 360. So this is an STL mesh that was scanned with a 3D scanner and we want to reverse engineer that mesh into a CAD model. So the first thing that's really important is getting our model oriented as closely as possible to the world coordinate system of Fusion 360. For this, I really like using the mesh tab and using the insert mesh function, which allows us to center it as well as move the object to the ground, which gives us a relatively flat surface to work off of. Uh, this puts our model close to where we want it. However, uh, it's not gonna be perfect for building our revolve or our extruded surfaces from. So for that, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna define a plane on an area of a part that we feel pretty comfortable with. So I like the flat surface of this part, so I'm gonna take that and build a plane. From there, we're gonna go ahead and use that plane to create a mesh sketch. So we're gonna go ahead and insert a mesh sketch through that planar face at a location on that large cylinder that's on this part. So we're gonna create this mesh selection using that mesh body and this plane and we'll just drag it into the particular location that we wanna use. And from there, now we can go ahead and uh, define through our fit curves to mesh section a circle that will give us a center point which we can drive an axis from. So there's a lot of initial setup in just driving an axis through a revolved surface, but uh, with various mechanical parts, you know, more prismatic shapes, uh, we really want to spend as much time as we feel comfortable with ensuring that we have very accurate reference geometry to build our part off of because this really will give us a more or less accurate uh, part at the end of this process. Because keep in mind that with reverse engineering, uh, we don't have that access defined right off the bat. We need to come in and figure out where it is so that we can accurately revolve that surface around or for some sort of an extruded shape, we need to make sure that we're directly on that planar shape that we wanna work off of. From there, it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna go into our 2D profile. We're gonna create another mesh sketch and we're gonna use that as reference material to start building our uh, 2D profile to build this revolve from. What I like to do is not worry about accuracy right off the bat, but rather just rough in a bunch of shapes to get us the general object that we're looking for. And then we can come in and I clean those up as we go along. So for instance, I'm gonna build a series of rectangles across this 2D profile of our revolved surface and use those as our baseline uh, to start building the sketch off of. So these are just standard rectangles uh, inside of Fusion 360. And then we can also use our Fit Curves to Mesh Section tool set to define some of the more critical angles or radii that we uh, may want to drive directly from the mesh. So, you know, we're using the mesh tools. We're also using native tools like the rectangle tool. Uh, we can use any of our standard geometry creation tool sets to build out our features. Uh, it really doesn't matter what tools you use as long as you get the part roughed in to where you feel pretty comfortable that you have all the main features. And from there, we can go ahead and start adjusting things accordingly. So I'm gonna start moving around a few of these lines, pushing and pulling. We already have a couple constraints in place. If we wanna constrain this part in various ways, we can do so at this particular point in time. And we're just gonna start moving everything around to get pretty close to what we want our end shape to be. And as you can see from here, as we're defining all of this, now we can go ahead and start trying to understand design intent. So we have our rough shape, and from there we can see that there are some parts of this that have some slight draft angles. So we can modify or move those parts 
uh, around in our sketch to fit accordingly to what we're trying to do with this part. Uh, for instance, this object was cast, and we may want to uh, turn this into more of a machine component, so we want to keep all of these uh, perpendicularity and parallel constraints in place, whereas if we were trying to recreate this as a cast model, we would probably want to incorporate some draft angles into these various features. Uh, and this goes for a revolve surfaces we're seeing here or any other uh, prismatic sort of shapes like extruded bosses and other features. So we just finished building out this sketch and once we've built this out, uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is just clean up a few other components and then revolve it around that central axis from where we'll check the accuracy of what we've done. So keep in mind, this is just one 2D profile in one location of a full 3D object. So uh, we can check to see how accurate we built that inside of Fusion 360 uh, in a way that is a little bit different from other reverse engineering softwares. So we don't have a heat map necessarily to compare to. So what I like to do is look for this uh, zebra striping, so to speak, where we can see on our part, we have stripes going in and out of our scan file from our CAD model. Uh, and we can check this in a lot of different locations to make sure that we have everything uh, exactly how we want it. But as you can see with the time that we took to make sure that this part uh, was set up correctly with the true axis of the scan file, uh, when we go through and build our 2D profile, we don't have a lot of problems with the part being off axis or the wrong size. Now from here, if we wanted to make any changes to our part, if we saw a feature was the wrong dimension or we wanted to come in and dimension this not just to our uh, scan file, but actually using particular values uh, that would be more realistic to what the part should be, i.e. if we're seeing a part that should be one inch is actually uh, 0.995 inches, we can go back in and make those adjustments accordingly. Editing this sketch as you normally would with a uh, Fusion 360 file, and we can update that on our part. Uh, so with reverse engineering as a whole, it's a little bit of a different process than just designing a part because we have a pre-existing object that we're wanting to make sure we define as well as possible. So really, the critical component to this is going to be having the proper setup with your reference geometry off the bat, and once that's done, uh, the rest of it is simply just sketching and building out the design intent of your part. So thank you very much for taking a look at this video. If you have any other questions about reverse engineering with 3D scanners, feel free to let us know.